Okay, we got a great question into our Ask Mark inbox yesterday, and it said, Mark, I've been following your 807 project with great interest, and I've learned quite a lot along the way. My question is regarding the cathode resistor on the 807 tubes. Why is the 390 ohm resistor rated at 10 watts? A voltage of 18 volts over a 390 ohm resistor gives approximately one watt. So why the 10 watt rating regards from Sweden? That is an excellent question. And um, I'm gonna dive in and explain it to you. All right, so what we've got here as I pulled up the STC data sheet for the 807 um, output tube, and this is plate current versus plate voltage, okay? Um, and what we're gonna see here is if you kind of look, they've got it drawn out, let's say we've got this thing running at about, uh, what was it, 400 volts of plate voltage or so. And then if you look at the plate current here, and then if you find your point where you've got the grid line bias, so about 18 volts or so, and you would come down on this little line here, you would find that somewhere here, I don't know, 54, 55 uh, milliamps is where this thing would be idling at. Um, but if you were designing this amplifier, you would actually pick a couple points on this and you would draw a load line of how you would want this tube to operate. Now this video is not about load lines. I should probably make one on load lines and, uh, and amplifier design. But what you've got to come to realize is that point where this thing is um, idling at is with no input signal. So the, the math you were doing that in your email was at no input signal. This just this uh, amplifier tube sitting here idle. Well, if you drive this tube, what, happen is, what happens is you superimpose your signal and it goes both left and right here. So you may find points where, hey, you're pulling way less plate current and points where you're pulling way more plate current than when this tube is actually at idle. So the harder you drive it, the more this thing will swing left and right. Ultimately, till you start getting into parts of the curves here that are non-linear and you start getting distortion. But um, hopefully this makes a little sense to you in that the amplifier does not just sit here at this one single operating point. Once you start feeding in an audio signal, this thing drives back and forth up and down this load line. Okay, I scrolled up in the manual and if you, you can find a section here called Class A Amplifier Single Ended and it starts talking about um, if you were to strap in a triode um, connection that um, plate current would be about 40 milliamps if you had a 500 ohm uh, cathode resistor and minus, minus 20 volts on the grid and 250 volts on the plate. That's not the exact scenario we've got, but it's not far off. We're driving a little harder here with a little higher voltage, a little less grid voltage, and we're, so we're probably sitting up in the 50 to 55 amps, uh, milliamps. Um, at idle. And what, what this little section here doesn't show you that they might show you elsewhere, and let me scroll down here till we find it. If you get to the push-pull section, they show this a little better, but they show here um, plate current no signal, right? And this thing may be sitting here at 100 or 80 or some value, right? But then it shows plate current maximum signal. So you notice how these numbers jump up? So you might be sitting here at 80 milliamps, no signal, and 150 milliamps with this tube being driven really hard. So based on that, um, we really can't stick with just um, what we had up here, Oops, which was um, 40 milliamps or 50 milliamps or whatnot. So let's go do some math on that. Okay, so let's just pull up Ohm's law here and uh, with the little power chart on it. And if you'll remember that, um, so I actually measured on this amplifier and I'm getting about 50 milliamps of plate current uh, through this thing after tuning it. Um, but if we kind of calculated it based on what um, the email had said, it was a voltage of 18 volts, it cost a 390 ohm resistor. So 18 volts divided by 390, we would have 46 milliamps. So you know, the calculated and what I measured pretty darn close to each other. And they're not far off from what we saw in that spec sheet um, for a single-ended triode uh, running the way we are. So um, where it gets a little more complicated than that is that's with zero drive on your actual grid. When you start driving the grid, positive and or negative with your input signal, you may drive that up by 20, 30, 40 volts. I can tell you that the, uh, 
the input feeding out of that SRPP stage into the 807 could drive that thing by 30 volts or more either direction, positive or negative. So it really starts to uh, change the uh, flow of current as you turn the tube on or off um, through the plate. So let's do a little math here. If we said um, um, 0.46, oops, sorry, 0 0.046, right, squared, um, times 390, that would give us about 0.825, so 825 uh, milliwatts of power that this um, cathode resistor would be dissipating at idle, right? But what if this thing, be a driven, went up to say 100 or 120 milliamps um, going through the plate? So then you would have 0.12 squared times 390, and that puts you at 5.616 watts. Now, I don't think you'll drive this thing to 120 milliamps, but I do think driving it to 80 or 100 milliamps. Um, before distortion is quite feasible, uh, especially if you looked at the load line, it kind of shows that. So, kind of hid the math here from you, but you can see at idle this thing's putting out about 0.825 watts. If you really drove it hard, you might get up into the 5 watt range. Um, my guess is you probably wouldn't. This thing would probably top out around 3 or 4 watts of dissipation. But I would hate to run something that uh, would be running 4 watts of dissipation with just a 5 uh, watt resistor. I'm, I'm a big fan of doubling when it comes to resistor wattages. Um, that way you don't have to worry about um, you know, any type of tolerances or whatnot and you'll be safe. Thus, I doubled it and that's how I ended up with a 10 watt resistor. Like I said, you'd probably be fine with a 5 watt. You're just running a whole lot closer to the, uh, to the max specs on that resistor. Hope this makes sense for everybody, and uh, that's why I like these 10 watt resistors. I also like them because they come in the little case that'll mount to your chassis to even help uh, keep them cooler. So, no worries. I like to over engineer, over design. I have less to worry about down the road. Thanks for watching, everyone.